Let's go to the next part here, and this is a political question, which I think is uh, easier to talk about. Let's go and put this up there on the screen. Democrats actually supporting the Colorado ruling 84 to 8, independents 48 to 35, Republicans who oppose at 66 to 24. So the overall support number stands at 54, oppose at 33. Keep in mind, this was a relatively quick one, sample of 3,400 people from YouGov, but still significant. The very first poll that we've actually seen on this direct question of the support for the Colorado court ruling disqualifying Trump from the primary ballot. Let's go to the next part here, please. Um, and this is important as well, is that this has now put forward a political campaign on Democratic states. Lieutenant Governor of the state of California is now writing to the Secretary of State, Shirley Weber, to explore every legal option to remove former President Donald Trump from California's 2024 presidential primary. I would expect in the coming days that almost every uh, Democrat or at least hard blue state is going to try and pursue this in terms of their lieutenant governorships. Of course, it will eventually get uh, adjudicated at the Supreme Court level, uh, but they will try to get it to be done. It does show you, though, that this is tremendously politically popular uh, with a lot of the Democratic Party and, frankly, not, not even particularly injurious whenever you look at the independent number mm -hmm. and the Republicans. And I think that's where, Crystal, we can agree at least on this. Is I mean, I think on a question like this, the public opinion actually doesn't matter because this is the legal question. But uh, because people are probably looking at it in the way that you are is like, did he do it or not? And most people do think Trump, at the very least, most people think Trump acted badly on that day. And yes. I think this is probably the lens of which they're looking at it. They're like, yeah, I would agree with that. Something like that. Yeah. Maybe they don't necessarily understand the legal ramifications of everything we're talking about. But as an actual political question, I think that they can. I, I think this fits even the Republican number, uh, the 24 yeah, percent, that was, exactly was matches. That. But it exactly matches the number of Republicans in a recent New York Times Santa poll who said that Trump shouldn't be on the ballot if he's convicted. Yeah. So it's, it, it's the same thing. It's just people who, you know, within the Republican Party, the Nikki Haley voter who's really consolidating right now and really actually like doing pretty well in New Hampshire. Yeah. I think that's where it comes down. Yeah, there yeah. is a very normy reaction here of like, yeah, January 6th was bad and maybe it is appropriate that, you know, we take these sort of extraordinary measures against him. And just looking at the text here, that seems like it fits. Mm -hmm. So I was actually surprised, though, that the numbers were this strong in favor of it just because it is, you know, it is an extraordinary move. There's no doubt about it. It is is a dramatic move um, to take a leading president, the leading presidential candidate off the ballot. I don't deny that whatsoever. So I was um, I was actually a little surprised to see a 20 point margin in favor of uh, that court decision. And in particular, I mean, I wasn't surprised at all to see 84 percent of Democrats support it. I wasn't that surprised to see that a plurality, 48 percent of independents support it. I was surprised to see that basically a quarter of Republicans are like, yeah, I think that's appropriate, given the fact that Trump is still such a dominant figure within the Republican Party. I wonder if that number will move as the um, news cycle really kicks in and the very, very clear and hard partisan lines on this question sort of kick in. And if there's more of a, a rally to, you know, a sort of like tribal instinct or, or partisan rallying around what this question means, I wonder if you don't see that support on the Republican side dip. But um, I was I was kind of surprised by this instant poll reaction myself. I thought that there would be, it would be more of a 50-50 split, split on this question. I, I would have uh, assumed so too. Although, I, I mean, I don't know. It also is one of those where on January 6th, you saw Republicans are like, yeah, he acted badly, but I also think he's the best candidate. So people have complicated feelings about all of this. And inconsistent, you, yes. People are deeply inconsistent, uh, which is part of the why it's fun to cover politics. Let's cover this next one up on the screen. 53% uh, previously had support, for example, the prosecution. Crystal, that almost exactly matches the number um, who support the ballot, by, uh, barring of the ballot, which yeah. is why I think it's all coming down to a question of like, do I think Trump acted badly? Yeah. I also will say, for all the stories that we do here, which are totally legitimate and which I genuinely still believe, I think Trump does have, you know, I would give him the edge, even though I think it's near a coin toss, is this is still an albatross around his neck. Yeah. Most people, the more the question of like, do you like Trump and do you support, you know, or his personal conduct or January 6th, anything related to Stop the Steal, we've seen people like Doug Mastriano, all these other, Carrie Lake and many of these other places, they lost big in deep red country when a generic Republican was doing very well on the ballot. So I would not count this an abortion out that could still sink him at the end of the day. Yeah. And Trump is his own worst enemy. For example, 
Remember Sean Hannity kept trying to get him to endorse mail-in balloting during his town hall, and he just wouldn't do it. Yeah. He, 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 in some, he, when he has a religious belief in his head, as he does that he believes the election was stolen from him, he will never drop it, guys, ever. And so if somebody's going to challenge him on it, poke him, Biden or somebody starts to get on that, he'll give his rant about Dominion voting systems. You know what was interesting to me? Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this poll floating around, but there was a, a Des Moines Register poll, this like a very high quality poll of Iowa caucus goers. And they asked them all these different, like very inflammatory comments that Trump has made. Like, does that make you more likely to support him? Less likely or it doesn't matter. And the headline from this was that his comments about poisoning the blood of America uh, make more Republicans more likely to vote for him yes. than uh, less likely. It was 42 to 28. But actually, there was uh, the one that had the most negative impact on Iowa caucus goers was a little surprising to me. Mm. It was 2020 election fraud justifies terminating parts of the U.S. Constitution. Right. That was overwhelmingly negative. There were only 14% that said it made them more likely to support Trump. And there were 47% who actually, who said, this makes me less likely to support Trump, which, you know, I, I just, I found that interesting. It was, like I said, it was surprising to me. It also made me feel like maybe Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley and co have been too nervous about talking about any of this. I mean, this appears to be the most damaging comment that he's made. And I haven't heard any of them bring it up really at all. So there's that, but it also does show you that even within a Republican base that overwhelmingly does think that the election was stolen, um, there is a discomfort with the level of disorder and chaos and certainly a direct attack on the Constitution um, that Trump has floated in the past. Yeah, definitely. I think that, I mean, look, it, it's the reason why is that people who even, let's say, for at least most Republicans I know, with people who are like, yeah, the election was stolen, they don't mean it in the way that Trump actually means it. They're like, well, Mark Zuckerberg you know, censored the Hunter Biden laptop story. And that's election interference. I'm like, yeah, I mean, conceptually, yes, but that's not what Trump is saying. And I think that having to often grapple when it's truly like in your face and sometimes with Trump makes people uncomfortable. That said, I still think people, a lot of people are ever gonna vote for him. Uh, I'm not quite sure I agree though, because with DeSantis, he's got to win over Trump voters too. Nikki Haley has always been just an anti-Trump candidate. She's a return to yesteryear. So of course, she's gonna get yesteryear type voters. But if you actually wanna win an outright majority, that would require winning actual MAGA people. And MAGA people support Trump as a cult of personality. Let's not even put aside like anything that, you know, whether they support or believe anything. It's more about protecting him, the individual. So yeah. That's where, I mean, they've always been in a tough spot. I, I just thought it was said, possible. I, I always thought it was impossible. Right. Like I, from the beginning have said like, I don't think that there is a strategy Mm -hmm. that they could deploy that would be successful, and I still think that that is the case. However, polling does at this point show that this is actually more, not his election fraud claims, but the chaos and the lawlessness surrounding those election fraud claims are more of a liability for him with Republicans than I had really thought. That's, I guess that's what I would point to, and I would also mm -hmm. say like, listen, DeSantis tried the tiptoe around right criticizing Trump thing and how's it working out for him? Yeah, but how's it working out for any of it? How's it working? I mean, the the most sort of like shameless sycophant is Vivek Ramaswamy. What's he at 5% right now? So it's True. not like the strategy of just pretending like Trump doesn't exist or more or less praising him and occasionally throwing like a little sideways jab at him. It's not like that was successful either. So they may as well have Actually, Ron DeSantis losing to Chris Christie in uh, New mm -hmm. Hampshire right now, which is pretty extraordinary in and of itself. Yeah, well, that's a whole other uh, <laughs> conversation, I think. Anyway, uh, we wanted to also give people a taste, too, of how this is us might boomerang out on Joe Biden and on the Democrats. Let's take a listen to what the Texas lieutenant governor had to say. Seeing what happened in Colorado tonight, Laura, makes me think, except we believe in democracy mm -hmm. in Texas, maybe we should take Joe Biden off the ballot in Texas for allowing 8 million people to cross the border since he's been president. Uh, disrupting our state. Yeah, so there you go. Don't, uh, don't threaten me with, there with a good time, I mean, <laughs> sir. <laughs> removing Joe Biden from the ballot. <laughs> it would be. I, honestly, it would be fun. Uh, well, look, we'll see. I do think this is certainly going to open up a can of worms. Although at the same time, if, the, if SCOTUS just kills a can of worms, then we're probably going to be better off. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.